Let's. Good evening, everybody who is attending this uh, webinar on the topic exploring Bode and polar plots for turbo machinery vibration problems. My name is Subbara Ganti, and I'm a Category 4 vibration analyst from India. And I, I think uh, quite a few people are coming from various parts of the globe as such at this point of time. And I should wish them good evening because uh, in India right now it is uh, 6 p.m. Uh, in the evening there. And at the outset, I would like to thank uh, Salatia for this excellent uh, uh, um, uh, initiat initiative to provide a lot of information to all the people who are, who are looking towards knowledge in the condition monitoring area. And I, I'm, I'm personally very ha happy to uh, provide this uh, presentation to all the people who are interested in this topic here. Basically, this, this polar body plots are come under the transient data collection point, uh, data uh, plots and mo uh, mostly applied for these turbo machinery. And actually, as you know, that turbo machinery, typically like gas and steam turbines and centrifugal compressors, they are the major workhorses in oil and gas, electrical power and petrochemical and fertilizers across the globe. And they, they are really critical machines and they come in various uh, combinations for meeting the various requirements. And the influence of the design, operation, process variables, et cetera, in evaluation of the machine health must be well understood to ensure their uninterrupted operation. So in this process of uh, looking at the health of the machines, people look at these vibrations here. So with that background, I'm trying to say that the purpose of this talk is this. This presentation is about understanding the various aspects of the transient data plots like Bode and Polar that, are pract that practically arise during the vibration analysis, especially for the large turbo machinery. And in this presentation, I would like to give a brief introduction about the importance of the transient data collection and then the, a, a few case studies that highlight the importance of uh, the body and polar plots. And when you're looking at a, a typically turbo machinery vibration monitoring system, ideally it is better to, the, the key elements of a good system are proximity probes, like a displacement probes for detecting the shaft movement, acceleration uh, for our velocity sensors for detecting the housing motion, and essentially a key phaser, which is a very important input uh, for the vibration phase measurement. Apart from that, we need a good software uh, base for which is capable of collect, um, capable of providing the various data plots to diagnose the machinery problems like Bode, Power Plotter, Orbit, Shaft, Central Line, and all that. And a, a quick uh, introduction to these plots, those who are not very much familiar about these things. A, a trend plot is a simple. Uh, a simple plot uh, with the parameters against the time, as you said that the trend is there against the time, how the, how the parameters are varying over a period of time. Then the Bode and the polar plots are specific, are transient data plots, which, which, where the, the, the plots contain the one X amplitude and the phase, which is plotted against the speed. And then we look at the orbits. Basically, orbit is the way the, the shaft center line is moving within the bearing clearance. And that tries to give you a, a, an idea about how the shaft is having a normal movement or an abnormal movement. And then the shaft center line. This is shaft center line tells you where the shaft is sitting within the bearings based on the existing load conditions, whether it is uh, sitting in the normal position or it in an abnormal position. That tries to help you to understand what's happening on the machine. Finally, subsequently, we look at this waterfall and cascade plots. Both waterfall and cascade plots fundamentally look at the frequency spectra plotted at various... Uh, uh, waterfall looks at this frequency spectra plots at sel uh, selected interval, time interval, whereas the cascade plot looks at the uh, frequency spectrum collected over RPM interval. Now, before getting into the actual uh, understanding of the polar, polar and Bode plots, an important in, uh, an idea about how the vibration data collection is carried out. That is very important from diagnostics point of view. Normally, most of the vibration anal analysis when it's carried out on the casing vibration related uh, uh, issues, the diagnosis is carried out on the steady state data. That is when the machine is operating at its, op um, when the machine is operating at its steady uh, operating condition, operating speed, under, under the normal load conditions, we collect the vibration data and that is sufficient to fairly diagnose what is happening on the machine. 
But when you look at these turbo machinery like steam turbines and gas turbines, if you simply collect the vibration data at the operating speed only or at some certain load conditions, you may or may not arrive at the possible reasons of the high vibrations observed. The, the ideal situation for data collection is in the, in the four modes which are shown on the screen there. One is called as the steady state, the transient, the slow roll, and the machine stopped condition. Steady state basically refers to the, the situation where the machine is having a constant speed, constant operating speed. So the load may be changing on the machine, but the speed is constant. Then the transient, where the speed is changing, typically during the startup or the shutdown condition. The slow roll is a condition when the machine and the, when the machine is running at very low speeds where the dynamic forces are negligible. But since you have certain vibration motion coming from different sources and ultimately in the stopped condition, getting some vibration data that also identify that also helps to identify the influence of the foundation of the piping and transmitted forces, etc. Now, if, what is a steady state means here? The steady state is refers to the machine operation at its rated speed producing the desired output there. So under the steady state operation, the machine could be loaded or unloaded, or it could be coupled or slow, solo. As long as the speed is constant at the operating speed, then we call it as a steady state. So this is the first data collection. Then the transient state. This refers to the machine operation at varying speeds, typically during the startup and shutdown. Actually, the data captured under these transient conditions, it reveals machine behavior at critical speeds that help to evaluate damping properties and a wealth of information is available from the transient state. Then the slow roll. The slow roll is a condition refers to the machine speeds at very low speeds, typically 200 to 500 RPM, where the dynamic forces like unbalance, misalignment, those things are not having a significant influence are almost there also upset, but still the proximity probes which are looking at the shaft, they do record some vibration there. And those are typically coming from various sources, either mechanical or electrical, either in the form of the runouts or any scratches or dents or any irregularities on the shaft surface. So that, that particular data, which is typically captured during the slow roll, that can be referred to as the glitch. And that is typically a noise in the data. And that must be suitably recorded and then compensated to really understand the dynamic vibration behavior of the machine. The reason here is when you, when in the slow roll state, the transducer signals is basically consisting of the vibration. Based in, under normal conditions, the transducer signal is basically con consisting of the vibration motion that is really coming from the forces. And then the slow roll data that is coming from the shaft uh, uh, shaft irregularities or any other things on the slow roll condition there. So if you want to really identify the actual vibrations on the machine through the transducer signal, you should subtract the, the noise in the signal there. So that is where the slow roll data have, comes into picture. And the, a couple of case studies which I'm going to show you that will tell you as to how, how important the slow roll data is. And uh, typically in the stopped condition, while the machine at zero speed, we, 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 what are we really going to see here is we capture the DC gap voltages when the machine is at rest and that will help the data will help us to understand how the shaft center lines are moving and sitting in the bearings in the normal operating conditions there. So this is about the, the data collection points. Now let us come to the, the, the two uh, transient ploys, uh, plots which are uh, most important in diagnosing the problems. One is the Bode plot that refers to the Basically, what is a Bode plot is that it is a plot which utilizes the vibration data filtered to 1x or 2x frequencies. And the, along with the corresponding phase, the, these are plotted on the y-axis and the machine speed is taken on the x-axis. And two separate plots are generated here. One plot is phase against speed and the other plot is amplitude against speed. So two independent plots come as under the category of the Bode plots. And actually, you can, you can plot it to any other frequency, not only to 1x, 2x, 3x, or 5x, or whatever it is. But from practical applications point of view, in order to understand the machine dynamics, most of the time, we only restrict to our, uh, the Bode plots to data collection related to 1, or 1x or 2x components. Similarly, the polar plot also act essentially contains, consists of the same data. That also means it also consists of the, the, the 1x and 2x filtered vib vibration at different speeds along with the phase. But the difference here is all these three data is merged into one plot here. So each, even though the same data is presented in these two plots, each plot has its own importance in identifying certain situations there. 
what, sometimes what Bode plot shows may not be clear in the polar plot and then vice versa. At, frankly speaking, many of the vibration analysts think that the Bode and polar plots are used to identify the critical speeds of rotating machinery. That's basically what most of the people think. But in fact, in reality, a, a wealth of diagnostic information can be extracted from these plots. And to enlist a few things, as I told you, the slow roll speed data and then the slow roll runout vectors, these can be extracted only through the polar, polar and Bode plots, transient plots there. And then also the amplitude, phase, and the frequency responses at the resonance. This is also an important information that is extracted from the transient plots. Apart from that one, there is another important information called as the synchronous amplification factor. So this, this, this tells you how the rotor is responding under the critical speed condition, whether it is within the acceptable, uh, as per the API method, it is in the acceptable range or not. And then th th that's one fact, one information we can extract it from the Bode and Polar plots. And then again, the, using the heavy spot and the high spot relationship, we can, uh, we can use it for the balancing of the rotors. And then the rotor mode shape or the deflection shape can be also estimated and understood from these uh, transient plots. And to, to, to give you an idea here, on the screen you are seeing a rotor who, when, when it is operating at its first critical speed, which is at 1650 RPM. This is actually taken from a rotor kit as such with the two, two disks here. So this is the first critical speed and this is the, the deflection shape or the first mode shape that is happening here, the blue color. And when the same rotor, when it is running at 5150 RPM, it is under the second critical speed and this is the deflection shape that is taking place here. These two are the first mode and second mode def, um, uh, model shapes that are there. Of course, it is highly exaggerated to show you there, but how the polar plots help us to visualize this, because the machine, that machine, you physically looking at the machine, you cannot see them taking these shapes ideally. But if you look at the data here from the when you are looking at the bearing one on the, on the left side and you are looking at the bearing two on the right side, that is plane one and plane two. When the, this proximity probes, you can see that the, the first mode is in the blue color here. This is the polar plot starting when, if you see here, it is starting from here and then trying to go. And then as the speed is increasing, it is increasing. This is the first resonance. And then at this point of time, the first resonance is completed. <clears throat> so. On the same side, on the, on the other side of the bearing, you see that the plot is also tracing the same curve in the same way. So from here, you can see that the, the, the fundamentally, the, the shape, the, the phase angles on, this, on the plane one side and plane two side, the rotor phases are the same. That's why you see that the polar plot movement is tracing the same movement, same type of path on both bearings. Now, when the, when the machine is passing through the second critical there, you can see that the shape is such that on the, on the bearing one side, this is out of phase, and on the bearing two side, they are in the same phase. So that same thing is reflected here. Now you can see that the, the, red, the red polar plot part, you can see that this is moving in this direction, whereas this is moving in the opposite direction. So this, this particular picture presents clearly shows us that, of course, this is a very uh, uh, ideally drawn polar plot from the uh, rotor kit set. In reality, these machines may not show as simple and as clearly as this, but they do definitely present this type of information on, on, from the polar plots. So by looking at the polar plots on the two bearings and, the same, and from the same uh, uh, probes, or the X probe or Y probe there, you can estimate how the rotor is responding at various first critical speed and second critical speed and, and also confirm that the rotor is passing through these critical speeds. So this is how the transient plots helps to uh, look at the mode shapes. The same information is here I'm showing it to you in the term of the Bode plot. The Bode plot is one which is showing you the first critical speed amplitude increases and decreases. First critical end is here and there is a significant phase change here also. The same thing you can see here in the Bode plot, in the, pol in the polar plot here. And when the machine is Passing through the second critical in the red curve, you can see that the amplitude is increasing and decreasing and correspondingly the phase is also changing. And the same data is depicted here in the plot here. Now, another important thing is that, as I told you, the, this, the slow roll, the vibration data consists of coming from the proximity probe, which also consists of a signal noise in the form of the glitch. So this, for this particular Bode plot, which is in the blue color here, this is the, vib this is the Bode plot, which is consisting of the vibration data, plus the signal noise, which is there. there. 
now when when we compensate it when we are removing the signal noise so we 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 take this slow roll vector here we capture this slow roll vector and start subtracting it from each point on the uh, uh, compensated uh, uncompensated data when you are subtracting you are getting this green curve here from the green curve is the compensated bode plot and then the uh, blue curve is the uncompensated you can clearly see that the the response at the critical speed and the vibrations at the operating speed are Slight, uh, 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 slightly less than what was in the, in the uncompensated. So you can see that the noise is adding to the real vibration data and trying to give you an impression that the vibration is on the higher side. And sometimes it can be on the, in the other way also. The, 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 uh, it depends upon how this slow roll information is vectorially interacting with the other data there. So this is how the compensation is carried out on the Bode plots in order to understand the exact dynamic movement of the rotor compared to the overall vibration, which is coming from the noise also. And then the polar plots and Bode plots are also used to calculate this amplification factor, which is one of the design information that is required when you're looking at the rotors. And then that can be calculated from the Bode plot and the polar plot using various, I, I'm not really getting into the details of the amplification factor, how it is calculated and how it should be and all that. But what, at this point of time, my idea is to show you that these plots are extremely useful in estimating the ampli and the, the amplification factor here. That, that, is, that, is, that is done from the Bode plot and the polar plot. And then another important, important information that you can extract from the polar plot is when you are balancing. Normally, when you are balancing it, you want to keep your trail weight. The, the trail weight can be kept anywhere on the rotor in the 360 degrees location on the rotor there. But normally, but you would like to keep it at a location where it will try to give you the best result at the first instance itself. So that, that type of uh, uh, activity can be carried out by looking at the polar plot, pol body plot here. In the body plot, if you are looking, this is the machine is starting from here low speed here and then gradually increasing. This is the critical speed and then it is coming to the operating speed. Now the rotor dynamics tells us that when the machine is operating well below the critical speed, the heavy spot and the high spot are in the same phase. So, so this, this is the high spot, basically the vibration of the data here. So the heavy spot also should be in this vicinity only. So if I, if I draw a vector from here to here, so that will be the high spot, heavy, uh, high spot location and also the heavy spot location because this is a uh, this is the data captured at a very low speed so this is so this helps us to identify the heavy spot on the rotor there and once you know the heavy spot physically on the rotor at which is existing then you can try to keep your trial mass on to opposite to this one and in the first shot itself your your confidence of getting a, a, a better results from the balancing so these, the uh, compensated body plot and the polar plot will help you to identify the, the heavy spot location of, for the balancing. So that is the basic general introduction about the body plot and polar plot that can be helpful for uh, identifying various fault conditions on the machine apart from the uh, critical speeds here. Now I'm going to show you, walk you through uh, four case studies here. The first case study is from, this is the situation. There is a motor and a pump coupled together and the motor was started after, after, after normal shutdown of the pump for whatsoever reasons. Once the pump and the motor was started, it was observed that the motor tripped on high vibrations within a few minutes after reaching the operating speed. It tripped on high vibrations, that's typically on the drive end side here. Now, what is the reason for the high vibration there? Normally, if you only try to look at the vibration data captured, if you have not captured the polar plot or the body plot, or that is the transient data for this particular machine, and you are only trying to look at the vibration data at the operating speed, then you, probably you could not have identified the possible reason why the motor tripped on this one here. Because you, at that point of time, perhaps you only see a vibration and think that is having an unbalance or something like that. But now if you see the, 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 uh, the body plot that is captured here, <clears throat> Uh, you should uh, pardon me for this uh, graphical pictures here because these are the screenshots. I could not get the exact plots, but these are the screenshots here. See, this is the motor driven, non-driven bearing uh, uh, body plot, but, but taken for the direct vibration. That is the overall vibrations. So on the top, you are seeing the motor non-driven and the bottom, you are seeing the motor driven. And these scales are different. This is scale up to only some 40 or 50 microns. And this is scale up to 100 microns here. 
Now, the in, in, interesting thing here is if you are seeing the motor started at the low vibrations here, this is the startup here. So while the startup, it is only around 30 or 40 microns. And then after reaching the full speed, the motor vibrations gradually increase of certain time. And when the vibrations reach the trip value, the machine trip, and then it started coasting down here. And in the coasting down, if you are comparing here, the, 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 the slow roll vibration at the low speed, is this is much higher than what it was started there. So this is on the drive end side. Non-drive end side also same behavior is there, but the scale is less here. The same behavior is seen, but the vibrations are relatively less. And if you see the orbit here, direct orbit, it is clearly shows that the predominant vibration is 1x because you are, you are seeing a clear orbit with the one, one dot on that one. Now, the, the picture will be more clear if you look at the Bode plot coming from the 1x component here. So now let, let us look at the motor drive end side, which is the bottom plot. So this is, this is the, the, the vibration that, that the machine was seeing when the motor was starting. You can see that this very low vibration, less than 5 or 10 microns at very low speed as the rotor is coming up. And when it came to the operating speed, when it came to the operating speed here, so this is the vib water vibrations, less than 20 microns. But within a few minutes, the vibration started climbing up. It went up to the trip levels of 80 or 100 microns and the machine tripped and then it started coasting down. Now, the important point here that you should draw from this Bode plot here, here is the, the slow roll vibration when the machine started was very small, 5 or 10 microns. But when the machine shut down, it is of the order of 50 or 60 microns. So this is suggesting that something happened on the machine when the machine, when the motor went up and tripped here. And looking at the, and looking at the orbit plots also, you see that they appear to be fairly circular, but there are certain flat areas on the orbit here. You can see that this is a straight line like thing there and somewhere it is like a, a curved area. So this basically suggests that for whatsoever reasons, when the motor reached its operating speed, then the vibration started increasing because some rubbing must be happening on the drive end side. The rotor must be rubbing at certain locations and the, uh, and the rubbing is giving heat input to the rotor and the heat input is, in, is bowing the rotor and the bowing the rotor is coming up as an unbalanced change, change the balance condition. And ultimately, as the rotor started bowing, and at one point of time, when the vibration reached the trip value, the machine got tripped here. So this Bode plot is clearly suggesting, and, 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 if, and the slow roll vibrations, when compared to the starting point, that significant, so, so much of high vibrations, this typically suggesting that there is a heat input to the rotor to the, at, at the bearing location that is primarily coming from rubbing action. Now, as to why, why the rotor rubbed and what, what are the reasons for that, that's a different thing. But what I'm trying to show you in this presentation here is the importance of the Bode plot and how, the, how such a valuable information is coming from here. If you are only trying to look at the steady state data and see that the vibration is 100 microns and 1x is coming from 100 microns, you might have thought that some unbalance or something is the reason there. But primarily, it is not the unbalance. The rotor, start, the rotor came to the full speed no load condition with very small vibration and then started going up. So somewhere the, the rotor started rubbing at certain location for whatsoever reason that we need to uh, exploit, uh, investigate. And that rubbing started giving heat input, bending the rotor, and then the bent rotor ultimately tripped the machine. And when the machine started coasting down here. So this is what the excellent information that comes out from the Bode plot, which, which tries to immediately troubleshoot that the possible reason for the motor tripping is the rubbing on the drive end side. If you go in for investigate and find out, you'll find out, the, find out the possible reason there. So this is the first case study. So this is the vibration data on the, on the pump side. On the pump side, the similar behavior is there, but the vibration levels are quite low. So the, the pump is not a culprit, but ultimately it is the motor drive end that was having the problem. So that is the uh, case study one. Now, if I look at the case study two, this is also a similar uh, case here. So if you look at here, this is a compressor start, uh, was started after replacing the existing rotor with a spare rotor from the warehouse. So this is a spare rotor uh, uh, from the warehouse that was newly installed in the bearings and started the machine. And the, uh, immediately after starting the compressor, the trip down high vibrations after reaching the operating speed. And then the operation people attempted it a couple of times more, but the same result was there. Now, why was the compressor tripping here? And what is the reason for this? Now, again, if you are trying to look at the steady state data only for this compressor, you will, your analysis is likely to go wrong. But now, if you look at the Bode plot from here, so this is the vibration trend, which is showing you that this is the first start. The machine reached the trip levels, tripped the machine. 
after some time the people the operation started the compressor again it reached the uh, it reached to full speed and after reaching the full speed it tripped the machine again it like that once so the three attempts now no. so now with these three attempts now if you look at the body plot here this is the compressor inboard body plot actually i try to draw the lines in the color because the actual curves are very light and you cannot see them clearly so the, the red curve is the direct vibration and then the, this is the, is the 1x vibration and the, the blue color is the corresponding phase there so this is a compressor inboard that is a, 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 a probe and then the next one you are going to see is the b probe so now if you see this is the direct this is uncompensated now if you see here the machine started with very high vibrations right from the slow speed itself this on the x axis we have the speed maybe around 200 300 rpm itself the overall vibrations are quite high and then the and, and the curve appears to be a flat curve till the operation machine reached its full speed low load condition uh, sorry full speed and then at this point of time the machine tripped actually and if i look at the vibration of the 1x component this is our 1x component which is also starting at a higher level here so this is the direct and the 1x body plot here this is the startup here and the machine tripped at this point of time now i have found out that the overall vibrations is quite high the slow roll here now this when the slow roll is very high it suggests it suggests that you have something on the rotor there now if i compensate this particular body plot for the 1x plot here then the body plot looks like this so the 1x vibration is very low which is less than around 20 or 25 microns so 1x vibration is slow it basically suggests that the rotor dynamic condition is excellent so the balance condition and everything when the rotor is passing to critical speed and all that it's very low there so the high vibrations which the motor which the compressor is seeing fundamentally is not coming from the rotor but there is another reason for that one there so this is the, you can see that the slow roll itself is very high so this is the vibration due to the glitch or the noise that is coming from the compressor rotor there so when the machine tripped at the high vibrations there the machine is not really seeing high vibrations coming from the rotor the actual rotor 1x vibration that is coming from the unbalance or any other conditions is very low here but the overall vibrations are coming because of the noise that is there in the signal that is coming from the from the the glitch in the in the rotor there similarly similarly if you look at the other uh, other uh, probe on the inboard bearing the same data is coming up and when you compensate it here also you can see that the 1x compensated on the second probe is also very low so this is the way the orbit is looking in the slow roll condition there at the 514 rpm you can see a lot of significant glitch that is there which is showing up as high vibrations there so this is what is adding to your dynamic vibration and showing up as a high vibration there so this is on the compressor inboard bearing the vibrations are relatively less here the overall vibrations if you see on the scale there similar behavior is there when you compensate it here you can clearly see the critical speed and then the passing through critical speed here it is around 5500 rpm so the, the so basically what is the, then we, it is concluded that the high vibrations on the on the compressor is not dynamic is not relatively coming from any dynamic conditions uh, like unbalance or imbalance sorry uh, or misalignment or any bearing clearances or anything like that there are no mechanical issues on the compressor it is only the slow roll that is the glitch on the compressor rotor for what so and it is a, as we said that it is stored in the it is stored in the uh, in the uh, uh, it's a rotor which was in the store for for a long time perhaps if while while when they are lifting the rotor or anything if 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 it was not properly handled uh, some dents or uh, some uh, scratches might have come onto the probe track area and then they have created this particular uh, uh, slow high slow roll on condition so this case two is is helping us to understand now we, we within a few frankly speaking within 20 or 30 minutes of looking at this data it is concluded that the compressor can safely start it now what they, what was what was decided is to slightly increase the the trip levels to to a high level at the 10 or 15 microns on the higher side so that the machine can stay at the 100 uh, at the operating speed at the higher levels there and operate the machine because there are no dynamic forces and there is no real mechanical problem on the rotor so such conclusions are possible only by looking at this transient body plot if one is looking at the only uh, at the uh, at the steady state data of the overall vibrations there this this uh, this uh, diagnosis would not have been possible so this is the second case study which i'm trying to show you here 
and the third case study is coming from a, a compressor drive and bearing and this was the vibrations were fluctuating means they were changing in a span of one year the one x amplitude and the phase was showing significant changes on the compressor drive and bearing even at normal loads so this is for one year data now here i'm going to show you the the polar plot but not as a transient plot but under the steady state condition how the polar plot helps us to identify the, a, a, a malfunction here so this is the vibration trend that is taken on the compressor drive and bearing this is from the a probe and this is from the b probe the the pink color is the direct vibration and the blue color is your 1x vibration and you can see that for some time the 1x is constant then the 1x reduced and then the 1x started going up and then there is a fluctuations here and there are some changes in the step changes in the phase angles also so this is coming from the trend here but you same data if you look from the this is on the other bearing compressor non drive and bearing similarly you can see a step change here then a step change here and a step change here and always accompanied by some phase changes so ideally looking at that from the trend you can try to make some conclusions that these abrupt changes in the 1x amplitude and phase can suggest some balance change but if you look at the polar plots they try to give you a better picture and more conclusive evidence so this is the data taken at four instances of time here you can see here this is december 2017 february 2017 january 2018 february 2018 so at various instances of time you can see that the 1x amplitude and phase is changing this is on both probes of the compressor drive and bearing so this is basically suggesting ideally the amplitude in the december 2017 if i have seen the amplitude here even in february 2018 also it should be around this place only but it is changing like this so this amplitude and phase change over a period of time is is basically suggesting that the rotor balance condition is continuously changing either you are having mass deposits on the compressor rotor or mass removal is happening on the compressor rotor and this is on the other other bearing compressor non drive and bearing also it is showing same indications you can see but the, the phase changes are relatively angular changes and maybe within 40 or 50 degrees and the amplitude change is there but similarly it is representing on the other bearing also now after this machine was run for quite some time under monitoring and all those thing but we concluded that the compressor balance condition is definitely changing what is happening here we 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 could not estimate but when the machine is opened there here you can identify that the compressor impeller blades some of the components were got broken and they were traveling in the compressor along that various locations and getting lodged in the compressor impeller at various locations and that's what is <coughs> trying to change the amplitude and phase at various conditions there so this is ultimately the conclusion was looking at the phase um, steady state polar plots at various instants of time the conclusion came that we have a change in the balance condition and when when appropriate uh, opportunity was there the compressor was shut down and when it was opened and uh, inspected this was the condition that was seen on the compressor there so this is one of the way, way of trying to diagnose using a steady state polar plot <clears throat> now the last case study which i am going to show you here is this is again related to a compressor's bearing here also the vibration fluctuation is happening during normal operation but this fluctuation is a totally different situation the drive and bearing has been experiencing fluctuating vibrations in the amplitude to the tune of 50 to 70 microns during normal operation so people are not able to understand what is the reason for this of course if you look at the first here this is a compressor uh, train there which are uh, this is a steam turbine driving the compressor here and the and the problem is on the compressor drive and side so this is the vibration trend that is the blower drive and side and the non drive and bearing here So on the drive and bearing you can see the blue color is your direct vibration and the uh, another color is the bottom here which you are not able to see the uh, 1x properly here but from this trend if you are seeing the amplitudes are spiking regularly there by looking at this data you may be under the impression that this may be a probe problem because such spiking cannot come from vibration and now when you look at a zoomed area here for certain time you can clearly see that the vibrations are spiking that is the overall vibration and the brown color is your filtered 1x vibration and the top here is your phase angle here for a better clearance if you further go there and this vibration trend is basically suggesting the amplitude and going up at randomly and then the 1x amplitude also increasing and the phase is also changing now 
as far as the phase is concerned and the amplitude is concerned looking at the uh, and this board and uh, this trend plot here it doesn't give a, pic, a, a clear idea as to how the phases are really changing here but if i switch on this data to the polar plot here steady state polar plot here that is clearly showing me that the phase whenever the phase is changing it's changing in the form of a loop here it is changing in the form of a loop here and this particular if you if you see here the amplitude is increasing and decreasing at that point of time the cyclic vibration the phase is changing the amplitude is increasing and decreasing that is your 1x amplitude at the same time the phase is changing so this cyclic variation of the amplitude of the 1x amplitude and phase this is a classical indication of the rub that is happening here so this is due to the rubbing phenomena there so this conclusion of the and again rub, what we should understand is rubbing is a secondary phenomena the primary primary reason is something else when the rotor is rubbing a rotating component is rubbing with a stationary component the prime reason for the rotor to rub could be some heavy unbalance or some change in the misalignment condition or any other reasons there but the rubbing is a secondary action there so from this polar plot it can be conclusively drawn that this cyclic changes of the this like the loop uh, loop changes of this amplitude and the phase is a classical light lubricated rub is happening whenever the amplitude is changing and that one there so this is the conclusion that can be drawn from these uh, plots here so this is how the bode plot and the polar plots are extremely useful in diagnosing the Um, uh, condition not only in the steady state during the uh, during the transient condition also so uh, gentlemen this is what i would like to present and share with you people i would like to thank you for this opportunity and if you have any questions uh, i'll be very happy to answer them thank you thank you very much mr ganti that's uh, really was an amazing one uh really i love the presentation i love the way you was explaining things and how you can make them very simple to understand thank you so much for this uh we will have uh about yeah more five minutes because it's almost 11:30 pm here in australia and uh <laughs> i I, sh yeah, i should wake up after another two hours and half for another presentation uh so we'll have like five minutes for the questions if you have any question you can type them i will uh i will uh tell a couple of question to mr ganti and the rest of questions you can send them to the email of training at mcsturbo.com and i will forward them to mr ganti the first question which is uh, we can have here is it possible to see a reverse orbit in the case of the rub yes <clears throat> it depends upon how the rub is happening see every time you may not see a, a reverse precession in the orbit on the rub there but under certain conditions definitely you can see them there but 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 but, but not every time but not every time actually in in this particular presentation itself if i want to show you here if you go back to that situation here see here this is the direction of rotation and the, and the precision is also in the same way this is a forward precision here so this is the, there is no reverse component in this one here but still the rubbing is happening here so what i would like to say is reverse precision in the orbit can be seen under certain circumstances but not every time perfect and the other questions we have here what will be the response on direct or filter, filtered orbit in case of light rub see the, in the case of the light rub as we can see here in this particular case if you are seeing this orbit here this is 90% of the vibration is coming from 1x only so in this case the direct and the and the filtered orbit will look as the same Mm. almost the filtered filtered to 1x this will be looking more circular and then th that's how the direct will be there but if the com if the orbit is consisting of subsynchronous components like half x or 1x or 1/3x or something like that depending upon the the rubbing situation and the rotor operating frequencies there so then that then that orbit will so subsynchronous when you when you when you take a filtered uh, 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 orbit for that one then you will see the multiple dots and then the, you can see the subsynchronous vibrations in the orbit there 
but it depends upon the orbit whether, whether, whether what are the frequencies that are present there as i told you in most of the cases i have seen on the turbo machinery you will come across only the one, one x component there when you want to see half x and then one third x and one fourth x which is normally described in liter literature there there are certain conditions that needs to be satisfied the operating speed should be the the, the the relation between the critical speed and the operating speed certain criteria needs to be satisfied then only then only you'll be able to see the clearly the subsynchronous vibrations in the in the orbits or in the in the data when the rubbing is happening otherwise you will only see a, a high 1x component as seen here perfect and the last question we have here what was the cause of the glitch in the second case study would you run the compressor considering the shaft is uh, primarily due to the glitch while monitoring the 1x levels exactly see as as see once you identified the high vibration which we are seeing at the operating speed is not really coming from the dynamic condition of the rotor there then we are we are, we, we are happy that, that there is no problem with the rotor the balance condition or anything is there so you can comfortably run the vibration run the compressor uh, we, 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 by, by slightly increasing your trip level so that the machine doesn't trip and then the, the, as you can see that uh, the, the, the picture here on the orbit which is taken the direct orbit you can see that it is very clumsy there so actually Correct, yeah. because this is a spare rotor uh, this, uh, this is a spare rotor which is taken from the from the stores there the the, 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 the mechanical run out on the, with the dial gauge was also checked there the mechanical run out, run out was well within the limits. So the high vibrations which you are seeing fundamentally is coming from some, some other region, either the shaft surface glitch out there or some uh, electrical run out, if, if, if at all it is there on that one there. So that needs to be established subsequently through more investigation. But immediately what we can say is the machine is fit for operation. There is no threat for the integrity of the machine because of any high uh, undue mechanical forces which will trip the machine as such. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gant. It was really excellent presentation. And uh, I have all the other questions, which is on the chat. We will, uh, it's all recorded. So I will uh, extract them from the, the, from the Zoom meeting and I will email them to you. And please, everyone, if you have any question uh, regarding this presentation, please send it to us on training at mcsturbo.com. I will forward all your questions to Mr. Ganti, and once I hear back from him, I will reply back to all your questions. Uh, we have another session uh, about the ultrasound and how it can be used as a condition monitoring technique in turbo machinery with en engineer Ahmed Mu'taz after uh, about exactly uh, two hours and a half from now. And I would be very happy to see you joining the, uh, the next session. Uh, now I will have to go for have a couple of hours sleeping and I will wake up for the next presentation. <laughs> Thank you uh, very much. The email Talha is training at MCS Turbo. I will write it. Training at MCS Turbo.com. This is the email. You can send the email uh, with any questions on that one. Training at MCS Turbo.com. And the session is already recorded and it will be on the MCS Turbo uh, or Machinery Consultation Services YouTube channel. And I will put it on the LinkedIn so you can see it on the YouTube channel and also you can see it on the LinkedIn.